Red Dawn, The Beginning, I slept with another man today. In the middle of taking a Michelob out of the refrigerator, Dan Jenkins paused and turned to see his beautiful 29-year-old wife of one and a half years, Caroline. She stood in the doorway connecting their kitchen and den. Having just arrived home from work, he treated himself to the one beer that helped him decompress after a demanding day of selling insurance. Shaking his head, he glanced back at her, wondering what she had actually said. Considering what he had been through in the past two and a half years, the Freudian slip made sense, but the fact that it was still occurring troubled him. By now, he ought to be over it. He forced a grin at her. She did not return the smile. He thanked God a bit, as he did every day, for bringing her into his life. She resembled a life-sized Dresden doll. Blue eyes, crimson lips, and rosy cheeks accompanied the long blonde hair. Slender throughout, with precisely the right amount of curves to give her workwear, a blouse and slacks, a sultry appearance. Although Caroline didn't have the obvious curves that 34-year-old Holly had, it was still a good thing that she wasn't like his cheating ex-wife, who he still hoped would pass away every night from a horrible wasting illness. Jesus, honey, for a minute I almost thought you said, never mind. I wasn't listening. What did you say? Her expression was so icy and depressing that it caused his fingers gripping the Michelob to shake. I said I slept with another man today, Frank Miller from the office. You know, he works in information technology. You met him at the party last month. Big, blonde guy. Dan's lips parted and then returned. He had the ridiculous idea that his mouth was always expanding and closing, making him look like a fish. Nothing was said. She remained still. In case that didn't register, Dan, I had slept with him. I went to a motel and spent half a day sleeping him. Gently, he placed the Michelob on the kitchen counter. He had the crazy idea that if anything spilled, he would have to be cautious wiping it up. What are you? You. How? At last, he managed to restrain his mouth. Don't even joke like that, Caroline. How could you? Damn it. It wouldn't be funny even, if. She seemed even more dejected now, if anything, but her words were icy. Even if your wife Holly hadn't cheated on you with her big boyfriend and kicked you out of your house. Isn't that what you were going to say, Dan? It hurts, doesn't it? But it's happened again. You want to come over here and feel it. He was having trouble breathing. It was not going to happen. He would wake up in a moment to see Caroline peacefully breathing next to him, as he was dreaming. After Holly had tried her hardest to ruin his life, he would lean over, kiss her, and give thanks to God she had come into his life to save it. When Holly revealed to him that she had fallen in love with another guy and was getting married to him, he blinked wildly in an attempt to hide his embarrassing weeping. It was only much later that he found out she had been seeing someone else for years and had fallen in love. Why are you doing this, Caroline? I don't believe you. You wouldn't do that. It's not in you to be that kind of woman. We've only been married a year and a half, but I know you better than that. She gave a head shake. I apologize to Dan, but this is the reality. You haven't questioned me about why I went to a hotel room with Frank, though. Caroline moved nearer him for the first time since she'd begun talking, stopped less than a foot away, stretched out her hand, and caressed the side of his face in an almost comfortable way. You're not a horrible partner. You're really damn good, based on my personal experience, which isn't that many males. I didn't use a ruler to measure the two of you, but Frank wasn't any larger than you, maybe a bit wider. Then, I had to get used to sleeping with other men again, which is why I cheated on you and Frank. He had no idea what she was saying, and even though she was speaking English, she could have been speaking Mandarin Chinese. The only thing that mattered was the feel of his flesh against hers as he cupped his palm over hers. How the hell does that imply anything? Dan, I'm going to file for divorce. I'm heading out of here now. Tonight, I'll gather the majority of my belongings and head over to my mother's place. I also made the decision to sleep another man because we aren't going to be together and I had to start over. Yes, and I knew that sleeping Frank would hurt you more than anything else I could do, so I wanted to hurt you as badly as I possibly could. It's true what they say about deja vu, he decided. It felt exactly like the day he'd walked into his old house and Holly, her big double D heaving under her skimpy blouse, had told him she was divorcing him and had fallen in love with an old boyfriend instead of kissing and giving him a titty rub. And the worst of it was, he still didn't know why Caroline was tearing out what was left of his heart. Even Holly, trash that she was, hadn't gone out of her way to hurt him the way that her loving replacement, whom he'd married to try to fill the hole in his heart that Holly had left, was doing. He felt a great weariness descend upon him, it was an effort to speak, all he wanted to do was go upstairs and collapse. Thank goodness it was a weekday and the kids were with Holly, he should have been angry, furious, wanting to end the beautiful woman in front of him, but it seemed as though Holly's first betrayal had taken all the anger from him, leaving him with nothing but sadness. I think I understand the procedure. I assume you reconnected with an old partner, or did you meet someone else and realize you made a mistake marrying a 37-year-old retread like me? With whom are you currently in love? You. Since the moment you entered my office that day, it has always been you. Up until that point, I had never given love at first sight a chance. He removed her hand from his face after taking it. Let me be clear on this. You go to a motel to screw around and make out with a guy because you want to harm me and you're going to get divorced. You've been in love with me. What is it that I don't understand about this picture? 
I have loved and continue to love you. Since Frank is a true lover and a stud stud at work, I chose him to spend my nights with. I wanted him to irritate me. But, she continued, I decided that it doesn't matter. I'm going to sleep Frank or someone else again, and again, and eventually I'll stop loving you and I'll respond to them the way I respond to you. Maybe not as wild as I have been with you, because I don't think I'm ever going to love anybody again the way I loved you. But I'll be able to go on with my life. Grasping her small, thin hands in his, he drew her down until she knelt before him on the floor, looking up just long enough to meet his eyes. Caroline, for God's sake, make sense. I don't understand. How can you love me, and tell me the bonding is the best you've ever had, and still want to divorce me? I gave you more than a year, Dan. I tried as hard as I could, but I can't do it any longer. I can't live with a cheater. He was so shocked by what he was hearing that he felt like crying and laughing all at once. Had she ruined their marriage by having an affair with someone else because she believed he was unfaithful? He desired to seize her and impart some common sense to that attractive, completely foolish head. Christ, you think I've been cheating on you. Caroline, I haven't touched another woman since the day we met. I'll admit, I had slept with a couple of women after Holly dumped me, but that ended the day we met. There's never been anybody else but you. How could you even think that? Has somebody told you a lie about me? Removing his hands from hers, she got to her feet. He knew he was innocent, but even so, he felt like a piece of shit under someone's shoe while she was staring down at him. I didn't say you were sleeping with anyone, Dan. You're in love with someone else and that's the same thing as cheating. You promised me at our marriage that you would love and cherish me only, and you lied. You've been in love with somebody else every single minute of our marriage. He felt horribly certain that he knew where this was headed. Though Caroline was mistaken, he still had to explain himself to her. There is no one. The mere sensation of her slapping his face nearly knocked him off the chair and onto the ground. Caroline was not the kind of woman to give people the finger. Not an open-handed smack that carries the force of emotion or rage behind it. Don't you lie to me, Dan. Not anymore. Do me the courtesy of at least being honest with me. You have ruined my life. You tricked me into marrying you. You made me fall in love with you. You probably ruined me for other men. But don't keep lying on top of all the other crap you've done to me. I don't still love her, Caroline. I don't. You have to believe me. You bastard, do you realize how much that hurt me? How many times have you slept with your eyes closed so you could imagine you were with her? No, I don't. You know you talk in your sleep. Well, yes, you do. You've cried for her, begged her to come back to you, and called out her name when you were with me. She inhaled deeply. My mother and all of my friends advised me not to wed you. They claimed that Holly's infidelity and your divorce had left you devastated. They labeled me a rebound. The fact that you quarreled like cats and dogs over everything demonstrated that you still loved her. Attempting to harm her was more important to you than caring for your own children and starting a new life with me. After you had healed, they said, you would either decide you didn't love me and move on to someone else, or you would go back to her if she gave you the finger. But I was stupid and I told myself that my love could change you, could heal you, could bring you to me. And I was willing to wait for you to fall out of love with her. I waited for more than a year, Dan. But you still talk in your sleep, and I still see your face when her name is mentioned. Damn it, Caroline, she hurt me worse than anyone ever has. She tore my heart out. She's the mother of my kids. Of course I still have feelings for her. We were married for more than 10 years. But I don't love her. You have to believe me. I don't. I've spent a year watching you, Dan, and you're a man in love with another woman. I did everything I could, but I lost and she won. I hope someday you and she can get back together again, because I can't see you ever being happy with anyone else. She left the kitchen by herself. At the door to their former bedroom, he caught her and grasped her shoulders from behind. You want me to get down on my knees and beg? I will. I'll do anything, Caroline. Anything. I should hate you for sleeping another man, but I forgive you. What do you want? Do you want us to move to another city? Another state? What can I do? He could no longer hold her as she wriggled. You can walk away from me and let me go. Please let me get my belongings and leave. Our union was a miscalculation. All he could say as he saw her turn away from him was, Don't go, don't go. Once she was out of the house, he could finally let the tears flow, so he sat in front of a darkened television drinking and crying until the night passed. After a while, he went down to the den, took a bottle of Dewar's, filled a glass, and started working steadily toward getting crap-faced. The following morning he was not awake till around 11 a.m., but since he was the owner of his insurance company and had employees, he was not in a rush to get to work. Eventually, he gave up and took a car to Jacksonville Beach, which was approximately 20 miles away from his Mandarin residence in Jacksonville, Florida. Leaving his shoes and socks in his car, he strolled out onto the beach, watching the seagulls soar overhead and a few obstinate tourists from up north getting sunburned in the cool November Florida fall afternoon air. He could have tried to reason his way out of the predicament he found himself in but he didn't think there was a way out. After learning that he had been nothing more than a meal ticket for a cheating W, the mother of his two cherished children, his 10-year marriage had collapsed in an afternoon. He had recovered from that fiasco and found another woman to love, but she had moved on, slept with a stranger, and was preparing to file for divorce from him for her love of his ex-wife. 
He wasn't a psychiatrist, but he was smart enough to know that the reason he hated Holly so much was that he did, in fact, still love her that much. The pain of her betrayal was not as vivid as it had been, but if he thought about it, he still felt like he was having a heart attack. How do you prove you don't love someone, he wondered. Does praying for them to die horribly every night, even if you could prove it, do the trick? But he also knew that he loved Caroline. After all, it's possible to love two women at once, right? The next Wednesday, he called Caroline at her mother's house and she said she didn't want to talk to him. On Thursday, he called her at work and she hung up on him. At closing time, he drove by her office and saw her leaving with the big blonde, who had to be Frank, and they were talking to him on the way to his car, but they didn't touch or kiss, which relieved him after he followed her as discreetly as possible. She drove straight to her mother's house in a mobile home park on the west side of the city. On Friday, he called her at work and she told him to stop calling. I apologize, sweetie, but I'm losing my mind. I have no idea what to do. Believe it or not, I'm losing the lady I love most in the world. Tell me there's something I can do to put an end to this, please. You are necessary to me. I have to tell you, Dan, I'm still very angry with you. However, I have had an idea. You could do something that would make me consider giving us another shot, but I won't say that I won't go ahead and file for divorce. Just tell me, whatever it is, I'll do it. I'm not sure if hearing it will make you feel so nervous. Tonight, I'll drop by your place, our place. 7 p.m. May we have supper together and discuss this. This isn't a date, please. I'm heading home after I want to chat to you. And goodbye to Frank once more. It wasn't enough the first time, was it? The minute the words left his mouth, he cursed himself. It wasn't what he intended to say, but he was so damned enraged and envious that he couldn't help himself. No, but my mom and two of her friends are going out with me. Every Friday night, they go out to eat. And I'm not going out with Frank no more, Dan. I assured him that would just happen once, and he hasn't had any problems since. Until our divorce is final, I won't go out with anyone else either. I shouldn't have done that. I knew it when I was doing it. But I was so damned angry at you. I just wanted to hurt you. But that was wrong. There won't be another man until I'm a free woman. And even if we do divorce, I will always regret doing that to you. He dialed a number he had known but now to test it. Holly curtly replied, What do you want? When she picked up her phone, he made himself speak to the woman who had destroyed his life in a polite manner. I'm sorry, Holly. I know I'm supposed to pick the kids up at six tonight for the weekend, but something's come up. It's important or I wouldn't ask. Do you mind if I pick the kids up tomorrow morning? Yes, I do mind. Bill and I, never mind. What time will you want them? Maybe nine in the morning. Okay, I'll have them ready. Thank you. Without saying another word, she hung up. When he hung up, he had to shake his head. She'd almost behaved like a human being for a little while there. It was strange. Their relationship had been a never-ending tug of war, with neither of them able to say or do anything decent for the first year after their breakup. Of course, he knew he was mostly to blame. She had their house, their children, and most of their friends. All he had was the hurt and humiliation of being the dumped idiot who never saw it coming. While she was still decent about things, he was still as wary of her as he would be of a spitting cobra. It had been almost a year since she had remarried this bill guy he'd never heard of, but in that time she almost seemed to be turning into a decent person. Of course, she had disappeared for almost six months of that. It was Bill that had dropped the kids off and picked them up from their court-ordered visits. Bill that he talked to. He made homemade spaghetti carbonara, which Caroline loved, and he bought a nice white tea because she also loved it. He felt like a high school kid getting ready for his first date, vacuuming the den and polishing the kitchen counters, wanting everything to be as nice as it could be because he knew that this would be the last time he spent time with Carolina in their home. He'd cooked the spaghetti and set it on the dining room table with the wine and nice dishes and silverware, lit two candles at either end of the room, inhaled deeply of the scented air, and prayed for a miracle at precisely 7 p.m. on the dot, when he heard her 2005 Saturn come into the driveway. Strangers knocked at the door, not a wife returning from a short break to speak with her husband, and something he'd never even knew was fragile broke inside him at the sound. He opened it and took in her sight, dressed in loose-fitting white slacks and a casual blue pullover sweater against the November chill. He felt his heart tingle against his better judgment, but it went away when he reminded himself of Holly. There was nothing he could do to ruin this last opportunity. Hi, he responded, grinning as he looked for signs on her face that would tell him why she was there. Hello, Dan. She entered and inhaled the scent of the place. Carbonara and candles. Did you not miss a trick? He smiled and shrugged. I'm sorry, but I had to try. Even if this isn't a date, can't you have a glass of wine and some carbonara? Just two people eating a bit and having a glass of wine. No strings. She shook her head, the little smile disappearing from her face. No, I'm not staying. I came here to talk, and then I'm leaving. I don't really think this is going to do any good, but I had to try. I don't want to divorce you, I don't want to try to have to get over you. But I honestly don't think you're going to be able to do what I'm going to ask you to do. Whatever it is, I'll do it. If you'll give us another chance. If I haven't loved you as much as I should have, I will. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for the last year. I didn't know I was talking in my sleep, and I honest to God had no idea I called out her name in bed. 
But you can't rip 10 years of loving someone out of your life just like that. Nobody could. It doesn't and it didn't mean that I don't love you. She took a seat on the den couch and raised her head to face him. Well, I know you love me, Dan. I never doubted that. I just know that you don't love me enough. As long as there are three people in our bed and two women in your heart, our marriage will end eventually. The longer I wait to leave you, the more hurt I'm going to be. And I'm not doing you any favors either. Either you'll find someone new, someone untarnished by your memories of Holly, or you'll go back to her if she ever realizes what a fool. You are so wrong. Maybe but that's the way I feel, and there's only one way I'll ever believe you might be able to get over her and start a life with me. Anything, just name it and I'll do it. She looked him in the eyes and said, then go to her and forgive her. Forgive her and mean it when you say you forgive her. And then come back and convince me that you've let go of all the hate and hurt you have for her. Then, I'll think about coming back to you. He looked at her in disbelief. This was not something he would have thought would ever come out of her mouth. Though it was difficult for him to speak, he managed to say to himself, I'll definitely call her and have a conversation with her, even though it won't be simple. I want you to have a face-to-face -face meeting with her and tell her that you forgive her for betraying you, having affairs, stealing your kids and home, and hurting your heart. It also can't be limited to words. If it's just what you're saying, I'll know when you get back to me. Dan, you have to have a change of heart, otherwise we will never have a chance. He stood there for perhaps five minutes, staring at her till she got up and walked by him, opened the door, and disappeared from his life. He never even tasted the carbonara before he went into the kitchen. He had to forgive a woman who, while married to him, had slept with other men before she met the man she had fallen in love with. A woman he had loved blindly without realizing that before she came home to give him a warm, wifely kiss that probably still contained remnants of strange men. It was a woman who had ruined his life and never once bothered to explain why he hadn't been enough for her, leaving him to wonder every night since what was wrong with him that all that love hadn't been enough to hold her, what was lacking, what was missing in him. He had to forgive a woman who had thrown away ten years of intimate, carefree, and familiar nights in favor of a new life with a stranger. He would have been just as likely to perform the one as the other, so why hadn't Caroline just requested him to fly by flapping his wings? He grimaced when they first started talking about Holly's new husband and his interests. But kids are good judges of character, and they seemed to really like this guy, so he could put up with catering to Bill-inspired interests. He wrestled with it all that weekend, taking seven-year-old Bob and nearly nine-year-old Becky out to movies and a bowling alley because they had both just discovered the game, thanks to Bill's love of the game. And for the entire next week after they had returned home, he struggled with it. He was unable to call Holly and was unable to even look her in the eyes or speak to her when he went to pick up the kids that said he wasn't sure why she'd become so human-like, but since she'd met and married this Bill, everything decent that she'd done appeared to happen. A week slipped into two weeks, and he had the kids again, even though the court order indicated she had to let him see them every other weekend. A palpable sadness pervaded both weekends when he told the kids that Caroline had had a small argument and was now living with her mother, they insisted on calling her, and she said she was willing to talk to them. The kids cried, but it seemed like they enjoyed talking to her, they indicated that she was willing to talk to him but he begged off, unable to speak to her while her unfulfilled demand sat between them like an unexploded landmine. After a month and a day, he sat outside her office building in downtown Jacksonville, watching her walk outside with blonde Frank escorting her to her car. He watched as the tall man bent down to plant a kiss on her lips, and watched as she turned her face so that Frank's lips just touched her cheek before she shrugged it off. He watched the scene with another small death inside of him. He had no doubt that she had been truthful with him, that she had not slept with Frank again. But there was no doubt that Frank was pursuing her, that he was gradually claiming her, so that by the time the divorce was finalized, she would easily fall into bed with him. When the man arrived at Dan's insurance agency office at 10 a.m., five weeks after their last conversation at what had been their home, he carried an official-looking packet, and after telling Dan, you've been served, he turned and walked out. Dan picked it up, telling his staff he would be out for the rest of the day, and instead of going out and getting wasted, he found himself driving to Jacksonville Beach. For the next seven hours, he walked the entire length of the beach, from Jacksonville Beach to Neptune to Atlantic and back, possibly ten miles or more. Despite the chilly wind coming in off the Atlantic and his light jacket, he made the most of the day, walking until almost dusk, when he stopped to watch the stars emerge from the clouds. His cheeks and eyes were wet with dew and moisture from the approaching rain and tears that had run down his face throughout the day. He felt like his clothes should be bloody because he'd torn out his heart and guts while walking the beach back and forth. He stood chilled by the night dew and the smell of approaching rain off the ocean, thinking that the beach was a better psychiatrist than any $100 an hour pro. But now he understood what had to be done, and he knew it had to be done even though it would be the scariest and hardest thing he would ever have to do. He drew up in the dark outside the house that had once been his, approached the door, and knocked even though it pained him to have to knock in order to get into a place he had paid for with his own money, lived in for ten years, and built himself. The door was answered by a man with dark hair, dressed in slacks and a green shirt. 
He looked into Dan's eyes at the same level, so he had to be six foot or six foot one. Aside from his glasses covering a large, aquiline nose, his appearance was so similar to Dan's that he might as well have been a brother. Dan, he uttered calmly, I need to see Holly. Dan noticed that Holly had instinctively reached out to hold Bill's hand, and a second later she was standing slightly to her new husband's side and behind. Dan, what do you want? I need to talk to you, Holly. We don't have to go through the attorneys to discuss matters pertaining to child support or visitation rights. We can discuss them over the phone. It's not about the kids. I need to talk to you face to face. Now, something in his voice caused Holly to back off and Bill to move between them. Bill held up his hand, palm out, as though to prevent Dan from approaching his wife. This isn't the place, man. This is our home. If there's something you're hot about, let the lawyers do their thing. Dan remained motionless, gazing at the strikingly similar man, until the latter withdrew his hand and turned to face Dan again, perhaps attempting to read his thoughts. Dan couldn't interpret Holly's expression as she fixed her gaze on him. He hoped there could be a hint of humiliation and guilt. Don't get your hackles up. I'm not here for trouble. I just need to talk to my ex-wife for a few minutes. Holly inquired, hopping from foot to foot as like she was nervous, which she most likely was. About what? She asked. This was the most they had spoken to one another in the past year and a half, without yelling. Not here, Holly. I need to talk to you alone. Somewhere else. Holly's spouse looked at each other. Dan didn't have to read minds to figure out what they were considering. No offense, Bill, but this is private, between me and the woman who used to be my wife. It doesn't involve you, and I want to do it somewhere other than here. This place has got way too many memories for me. Look, we've been divorced almost two years. If I was going to hurt her, it would have been when I still hated her guts. Or at least, when I hated her a lot more. He saw Holly start to shake her head no as the two looked at each other again. Holly, you know I'm not going to hurt you. I was married to you for 10 years. I'm the father of your children. I loved you so much it almost destroyed me when I lost you. Doesn't 10 years entitle me to 30 minutes of your time? While Bill only stared at the floor, she cast a glance at her spouse. He was clearly throwing this one to her. It's not a good idea, Dan. We've, things are, things are finally settling down. The kids have gotten used to their life with two new families. You seem to be happy with, Caroline. Why stir up? She murmured, nodded her hands together and refusing to look him in the eyes. Dan crossed the threshold into the home that would never be his again. She didn't retreat this time, but Bill appeared to move sideways, creating a space between them. At last, she raised her gaze to meet his, and he realized that this was the first time in two years that they had truly looked at each other. Holly, I won't cause any trouble. I won't call you names or grovel for you to return. I just feel compelled to speak with you. This evening, it is unable to wait. I want to do this when it's just the two of us, but I'll explain. For heaven's sake, how could you steal my children, ruin me, and do all of that and yet not be willing to offer me even a short while? Next, he faced Bill. Holly is aware of who I am and that I won't harm her. My kids are raised by her. All I want to do is chat to her. A few blocks away, at the Shoney's. Although there will be others nearby in case you're concerned, we'll have our privacy. After walking a few feet apart and exchanging low-pitched words, she finally moved back to stand in front of him, her beauty still hurting Dan's eyes. All right, Dan. You proceed there. It will take me a few minutes to get there. I swear. He forced himself to stop himself, realizing that it wouldn't help and that insulting her would end his last chance to win Caroline back. Even though for that brief moment there was an unbearable urge to laugh and ask her if that promise meant as much to her as the promises she had taken a decade before to love and cherish him. Thirty minutes later, she came in, seemed to slow down as she approached him, and he sensed that she didn't want to be there, or anywhere near him, so he left without further word and waited at a seat at the back of the restaurant. It was already 7.30 p.m. on a cold November night, they probably wouldn't have too much business at this time of night. A waitress, fat, face lined, and visibly wincing every time her feet touched the floor, came over to their booth. Well, screw her, he thought. He was going to be damned uncomfortable so why shouldn't she be? She hesitated for a moment, then sat down opposite from him. She remarked, nasty night to be out. What can I get you guys? I'll have coffee. You. Holly shook her head, although she'd thrown on a sweater, the appearance of her creamy flesh with those bumps made him want to hurl her to the table. Her arms still had chill bumps. Serve her coffee with additional sugar and cream. It will remove the cold feeling. Isn't that how you still view it, sugar? Recalling all the times they had entered such places and realized he would be within her before the night ended, he was unable to resist the final statement, which struck him hard all over again. Why the hell had she tossed him away? She looked irritated for a moment, but then her expression changed to grief so fast he almost missed it and she seemed like she was misting up. Nevertheless, she blinked the wetness away and asked, you still remember that? Holly, I have a lot of memories. I wish I could forget a lot of things, but I'm not able to. What he said, she murmured, glancing up at the waitress, along with a cherry pie slice. She adored the cherry pie they served at Shoney's, and he never minded because, as she put it, every ounce seemed to go straight to me. 
He wanted to chuckle at that, but the recollection struck him hard once more. After the waitress departed, she took a moment to gaze down at the table before looking him in the eyes and saying, Okay, Dan, what made our meeting necessary in this manner? Speak. I have a 30-minute time limit before Bill comes seeking for me. Is there a connection between it and Caroline? I learned that you two were living separately from the kids. It wasn't until he heard her that he realized he was about to say it. She left me. Today, the divorce papers were served to me. He thought Holly seemed truly unhappy, even if she might just be an amazing actress. Oh my, Dan. I really apologize. She is incredibly beloved by the children. They also mentioned how strong you guys appeared to be. What took place? She said, Dan, I really apologize, but what does that have to do with me? After he failed to respond, why did I need to see you so badly? You're the reason she left. She expressed no understanding by simply staring at him. What? How? She believes that none of us. She told me that I was still in love with you and that our marriage is a sham. That's crazy. No, he murmured slowly, lowering his guard at last to gaze at her and admit that she was correct. I simply never had the integrity to acknowledge it. She answered slowly, shaking her head as if she didn't want to acknowledge the reality. You're still in love with me. You needed to be aware of that. If you don't love someone that much, you don't hate them as much as I detest you. And I still feel the same way I felt the day I found out you were having an affair with that guy. Breathing deeply, he needed to get this out of his system before his nerves overtook up and he broke and bolted. I have no desire to fall in love with you. Caroline is someone I want to love. I could love another lady, but you're still there, taking up space. I want to let go of you. My desire is to be liberated. Her expression of melancholy appeared to intensify as his words set in. I'm here because she informed me what needs to be done in order for us to have a chance to stay married. What? Why? I'm here to forgive you, Holly. She gave him the impression that he was speaking a strange language. What? I'm here to forgive you. Her expression suggested that she was going to say something, but she refrained. I'm sick and weary of loving and loathing you despite knowing what you've done. You ruined my life, betrayed me, and threw my love for you out the window like it was yesterday's garbage. Although I know it's untrue, I want to believe you're a monster, a filthy woman, and a total piece of trash. I had a lot of time to think today, to remember. You love the kids too much to be a total monster. I never thought you were completely evil. That's why you hurt me so bad. If you were just a rotten woman and I had just made a terrible mistake in marrying you, I could have gotten over you. Her eyes were definitely watering now. I'm the only person you've ever treated like trash, and I could never understand it. I still don't. You're a good daughter, mother, and friend. But you're a decent person, except where I'm involved. However, you had to have had a valid cause for your actions. Perhaps I never performed well enough in bed to keep you at home. Not that I thought so, but who knows. It's not that unusual, really. I could live with the idea that marriages end in divorce if you weren't mine and I didn't love you so much. People lose their affection. Simply put, when it occurs to you, it's different. At that moment, the waitress appeared to be embarrassed by what she had heard as she raced off, leaving the pie and the two coffees behind. After taking a sip of the boiling coffee and enjoying the pain in his mouth, he focused on it for a few more seconds before looking up at her. She had not spoken, but she was kind of crying. My comment, is the damage too much, or she's just tricking him? Part 2 ending coming today as well, I wanted to do a longer series, but I need some time to prepare for that, see you in the ending.